Hey there, welcome back to The Surge. Last time we got some interesting information on our dear friend Warren. Learned a little bit about the backstory that drew him here to Creo in the first place. I find it interesting that, uh, <laughs> that they crammed all of this characterization for Warren into the DLC. I have a feeling that their characterization of Warren Seriously? in A Walk in the Park Please? Hold that thought. Hello? Don't kill me, but I'm not as tasty as I look. Uh what? Anyway, I have a feeling that them putting all this story in the DLC was a response to the criticism of Warren not having very much character, so... Good on them for that. Good on the developers for that. I feel like they did a good job. Alright, I'm not even gonna bother fight this thing. Fuck that. I know what I have to do. I must find Iron that cringing do-gooder rodent and his pathetic sidekick. Ah, rusty rat. I will destroy them and everything they stand for. But first I need power. Ah, more power. All these sniveling synthetics, they have what I need. I must harvest their power cores to fulfill my ultimate plan. Ah! <laughs> and then, Iron Mouse will be... Mainstream delete admin port create all. Reboot initiated. Oh, well, it seems that it's time for a hero to save the day. Because it seems the claw, I mean, Carbon Cat, has gotten a little out of hand. I tried to contact you, but I couldn't get your signal. I picked up a distress beacon from someone down there. Keep an eye out. Oh, don't worry. My eye is firmly kept. Oh, the Iron Mouse set is so great. I like the tail. I like that the tail has, like, jiggle physics on it so that it, like, wobbles around while you're beating stuff up. But it's, like, but it's appropriately heavy, so it's just kind of dangling. <laughs> it's realistic. It's a realistic metal tail. So I guess... <laughs> I guess we can kind of sort of put together a story now. Now that we are, uh... Now that we are starting to near the bottom of the sinkhole. In fact, that appears to be the bottom of the sinkhole down there. Now that we're nearing the bottom of the sinkhole, uh, I suppose we're starting to get a picture of what happened here. <laughs> Especially now that Carbon Cat is running around. <laughs> One thing I find interesting about these search and rescue guys is that by themselves they're not too bad but like put them in a group of two or three and they become an absolute nightmare to deal with like I think they're just smart <laughs> they're just smart enemies so we picked up a new weapon there uh, I don't think I'm going to be using it uh, but it is it is pretty great. It's pretty great. It's a single rigged weapon. That's that's pretty effective But then again, I guess I've been wrong about a lot of that stuff so far So uh, who knows is currently hiring <laughs> Apply now. At this point in the let's play I think I have lost the ability to predict what weapons and implants I'm going to use I really ought to start watching these videos in advance, but the problem is that 
the problem is that if I did, I would come up with all of the things to say on the first time through, and then I would forget by the time that I actually recorded. Like, I would forget if I had actually already said something. Anyway, it's no surprise that we are going to have to go, uh, cat, cat napping. It, uh, not, not sleeping, I meant that like, like kidnapping. Like, we're going... Let me try that again. We're gonna have to go hunting for a cat, is what I meant to say. So I think we are going to appropriately kid ourselves out. Hey look, I am actually gonna use it. I think I'm just destined to always be wrong about the equipment that I'm going to use in this Let's Play. We are temporarily going to go back to what we know. So uh, the carbide cable whip is joining our current. Um, our current stable of equipment instead of replacing anything important. And it's back down we go. Because now that we know that Carbon Cat is at least at least halfway responsible for the things that have happened here, who knows? Maybe we'll be able to talk some sense into him. <laughs> Can I really even pretend that? Do you, like... Do you even think for half a second that this is going to end with anything other than us fighting Carbon Cat? Cause come on, I mean, did you see the guy? <laughs> we're a hero! We're, we're Iron Mouse, we have to save the day. And I mean, how could we save the day if there wasn't a comically evil villain to fight? Oh god. Look at them laughing their asses off the stupid rocks. Look at how blind they are. How willfully innocent. No one is innocent. We've all caused this mess by our lazy acceptance of it. Some shiny, slick corporation full of promises and PR. Or guess what, assholes? Creo's not coming to save you! I don't know who this person is. But boy, do they have a point. I mean, there's a little bit info wars about it in their attitude, but they sure do have a point. I don't know if you've noticed, but Creo's higher ups do not seem to have made the best attempts at resolving this mess, have they? Do you hear that? That's unfortunate. I appreciate that these enemies wake up if you use their backs to heal. Like they're not they're not just gonna stand there and take it. They're like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> uh You know, someone mentioned this in the thread and in the comments for the last video, and I, I really appreciate the I really appreciate the metaphor of Iron Mouse as a character. Because a little detail about Iron Mouse that you may have noticed is that Iron Mouse is not just a comic book hero. The, the reason we have been finding Iron Mouse comics all over all over the Creo facility is because Iron Mouse is technically a Creo-owned property. And so having said that, it makes a little bit more sense now, doesn't it, that Iron Mouse is the protector of the environment, the chrome-plated steel throwback to... Uh, comic books of yore, with Carbon Cat being his, you know, evil nemesis, having giant smokestacks coming out of his back, and being like a, uh, being like a, a reference to rampant pollution, like the, like the villain in a, uh, like the villain in a Captain Planet cartoon. The metaphor certainly is lost on Warren. Although, to be fair, from the t-shirt, he seems to idolize Carbon Cat and Iron Mouse. <laughs> I'm sure he's having fun. I'm sure Warren is living his dream right now. His, his two dreams. Number one, Iron Mouse. Number two, being able to walk again. <laughs> but who knows, we may get a little bit more story on that before the end. There are some interesting theories out there with what caused Warren's accident and what the accident was, and we'll discuss those in a little bit. But for now, help, help, help me! I'm trapped! That damn cat is after me! Help! 
to me! Seriously, please! For now, it's time to save our dear sidekick, Rusty Rat, after picking up this item. Hold on, Rusty Rat. Iron Mouse is on the way! I'm over here! Ah, get me out of this! Help! Dude, please! Fear not, my faithful ward and companion! Iron Mouse will save you! I don't- I don't do a real good hero voice. I'm sorry. It's not- it's not one of my strong points. I mean, I could try, but... Listen, I just don't have the heart for it. I don't have the heart to be Iron Mouse. Only Warren does. Hey, pal. I don't want to die! Please help me! No problem. Welcome to freedom. Population U. All right, you're safe now. Everything okay? Oh my god. My god! Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I thought I was a goner. I'm shivering all over. That was so damn close. I'm, I'm, hell, phew, thank you. Look, I, I, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm getting out of here before that crazy cat shows up again. So what's your story? What do you do here? I'm Rusty Rat, your, your trusty sidekick. Don't you recognize me from the comics? What? I mean, you, you, you're the one wearing the mouse armor. Yeah, my name's Ralph, uh, and I'm nobody interesting, just a dude trapped inside a rusty rat costume. Uh, story of my life, you know? I actually applied uh, for the QA supervisor position at Creo, but this, uh, but this other dude got the job. Totally uh, not qualified. Seriously, a uh, bogus move on their part, but hey, uh, they must have felt bad about it. Because they invited me to be an official mascot of the park, uh, which isn't so bad when you think about it, right? Right? Sure. Do you have any idea why that cat mascot was trying to blow you up? Are you kidding? I, I don't have any idea why any of this crazy shit is going on. I'm just a guy stuck in a rat suit on the worst day of his life. But, but, uh, it's gotta have something to do with that, uh, stuff. I mean, you, you've seen it too, right? That shiny black and purple goop that moves all by itself? I don't know what it is, but the carbon cat mascot got covered in it. I mean, that thing wasn't exactly nice before. It was always programmed to act like an asshole. It also pretended it wanted me and Iron Mouse dead, but now it's gone totally insane. Like, the goop corrupted its processes, made the synth think it was actually Carbon Cat? That thing is dangerous, man. Huh. What do you mean you're stuck in your rat suit? Well, uh, funny story, uh, really. Um, okay. It's not so much that I'm, uh, stuck exactly, it's, uh, that, well, I'm not exactly, uh, wearing anything underneath. Yeah, and the locker room is at the bottom of that sinkhole, uh, probably surrounded by crazy killer robots. Not the biggest problem anyone's having today, but, uh, awkward. Certainly is. Live long and prosper out there, dude. Okay, Rusty Rat. <laughs> Ralph, uh, glad I could save you. I mean... I don't know if you offered so much helpful advice, but you know what? One person saved is one person less that's splattered all over the ground by killer robots and explosives. Which seems to be a running theme today for employees at Creo. My little fairest friend, Iron Mouse, has no idea what's coming. <laughs> Just wait till he gets a load of his peely sidekick, Rusty Rat! Ha ha ha! Time to a rocket rigged with explosives ready to blow! <laughs> that is for you, Iron Mouse! Just wait till you fall into my dastardly trap! <laughs> it's what you deserve! Now is ruining my plan! Soon I will destroy you and your do-gooder sidekick once and for all! Along with anyone who stands in my way! <laughs> Boy, I hope he wasn't like this before he went insane. Because this carbon cat fellow does not sound like a villain that I would want to read the dialogue of. He's like a discount Dr. Doom. <laughs> uh, I really, I really appreciate, you know what? They didn't have to do that part, right? 
Like they they kind of they they pretty much have all the characterization of Carbon Cat that they need. They really didn't have to do the over the top villain thing, but I appreciate that they did because I think it I think it adds another dynamic to the Carbon Cat robot character. Cuz think about it, right? Like the Carbon Cat robot is just programmed to be insane like that. But also you have to consider what Rusty Rat said about how like this this black gunk that's corrupted the rest of the mascots also seems to have made the robot believe it actually is a person. I mean not a human person, a cat person, but you know what I mean. It it really does believe that it needs to destroy Iron Mouse the real thing and the environment the real thing. We're going to head back to the op center one more time just to make sure that I am appropriately prepared for a boss fight that may or may not happen once we reach the bottom of the sinkhole. I don't know. I did a pretty poor job of foreshadowing it, didn't I? But to be fair, what kind of what kind of downloadable content for this video game would it be if it ended with like a hiring. with like a small exploration segment and not a crazy ass bombastic boss fight? Apply the boss now. fights in this game are great. They're really entertaining. In my opinion, the boss fights are some of the better parts of the combat in this game. And so I would feel remiss were I not to appreciate them for everything they are worth. So, I've, I've put on an endurance enhancer here. And you might notice that it's not increasing the size of my bar very much. And I feel like that's kind of a misconception that it took me a while to get over. Hey, by the way, uh, something I really like is that the final shortcut in this level was in plain sight the whole time. The final shortcut of this area is the manhole underneath the Iron Mouse statue that I was looking at at the very start of a DLC. Like, some, man, that was like, that was like five or six episodes ago now. That was a long time ago. Anyway, uh... The difference, though, is that you don't actually need the Endurance all that much, so it gives it in smaller amounts. Oh my. Oh my, it's Carbon Cat. And he has the home field advantage, it seems. Hello, Carbon Cat. You know what? This certainly is appropriate music for a climactic superhero boss fight. They really play into it, too, at, at the end of all of this. We will have our showdown with Carbon Cat, and it will be thematic and appropriate, too. God. Unfortunately, Carbon Cat has the gribbly advantage, it seems, and he is using that against us. I think Carbon Cat realizes that we specialize in melee combat. Thankfully, Carbon Cat can be knocked down by the, the shoving drone, so, uh... I think we've got this cat firmly inside the bag. <laughs> Truly, this is a perfect end to the DLC. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that, no. What, what I was gonna do is I was gonna make cat related puns for this entire for this entire fight for the rest of the episode but I'm not going to do that I'm going to spare you instead we are going to have an honest one-on-one -on -one duel with carbon cat and we are going to prove that iron mouse is superior once and for all time for a cat nap carbon cat the kind that you don't wake up from Take that, foul fiend line. Uh oh. Well, that's not good. I regret everything that I said about you, Carbon Cat. Um, suddenly I have the feeling that you and I could be friends and that we don't have to fight. And it's mostly because you're about to kick my ass. This second part of the fight is really cool. 
I, I, I really like that this fight has two phases. Like, the first part is not... The first part is just like an like a warm-up. <laughs> the first part is like your I decided to fight Carvin Cat tax. So now, in addition to the in addition to the Gribbly Slam moves that it had before, Carbon Cat now has a hell of a lot more attacks that are big and slow, but they hit real hard. Like real, real hard. Particularly, I want to avoid the, the gas breath thing that he can do with his like with his, like, poison, noxious gas that harms the environment and all that stuff. Uh, because the Iron Mouse suit doesn't have any elemental resistance. And I am fighting him in the Iron Mouse suit for a reason, by the way. Don't worry. You'll see once we defeat this, this villainous fiend for good. I really like this fight. This, this fight is entirely appropriate as an end to the DLC. So the gimmick, I guess, of this fight is that all of these green poison gas tubes that are sticking out of Carbon Cat now, we can damage those and it will turn them like unarmored if we break one, which will cause it to take a little bit more damage for a while. But if you don't, if you don't, eventually they will power up and they'll do this like big green explosion thing that like does a lot of damage if you get close. And there's also this attack, where he will, like, protect himself with a garbage shield, but you can disable it by using certain drone attacks, which is really cool, actually. It, it rewards a little bit of ingenuity and using your, uh, using all of your, all of your skills and, uh, tactics. Because the drone, the drone doesn't get much play in this game. Like, the dr it's unfortunate. Something I think that they're going to make better in the Surge 2 is that your, your ranged options are kind of lacking in, like, power in this game, which I've mentioned a couple times. But, uh, in certain fights, they prove to be pretty useful by allowing you to disable certain enemy attacks or push them around and all sorts of stuff. One thing you might notice about this fight is that it is, it is kind of an endurance match against our dear friend Carbon Cat. He's, he's quite hardy, this guy. Like, this is gonna come down to the wire. Like, this is, this is like, this is like Snake and Liquid fighting at the end of Metal Gear Solid 4. Except instead of a Metal Gear, we're fighting in a theme park. And instead of a snake and an ocelot, we are a cat and a mouse. Which I suppose is appropriate. I suppose it's appropriate that this is an uphill battle, given that I am a mouse and, you know, this is my natural predator that I'm trying to beat up. Something I appreciate about this fight is that it incorporates tactics from the enemies we've fought so far. Like this, you might notice that it's using a lot of the same attacks that the, the Gribbly mascot did. Like, I only fought one or two of the Gribbly mascots because like, you can just run away from them. They're pretty easy to avoid. But, you know, you, you can see he's got, like, the extendo arm, like, big giant sweeps that I am just so good at dodging. And, uh... Just as good at dodging them when they're giant and coming from a boss. I really like the design of the boss too. Like it, it really, it really evokes the imagery of like something controlling our dear friend Carbon Cat Robot. <laughs> you know, Carbon Cat Bot. So something controlling him and like taking him over and combining like anything it has near it to to make an unstoppable robot. Also, I had no idea it could even do a giant stomp attack. So that's great. Oh, but oh well. There's also that attack. I don't think I've ever seen it do that attack. I don't know how you can cause it to do that, but it's got so many attacks that it pulls out at the last second that I thought I was gonna die, like one step from the end. But thankfully, 
despite all of its health and all of the trouble it's caused me. It looks like curiosity killed the cat after all. Uh, actually, it was Iron Mouse. I, actually, it was, um... Actually, it was me, uh, Warren. The, you know, the exosuit guy wearing the Iron Mouse suit. Um, I actually was the one that, that did all the work just now. Cur curiosity had basically nothing to do with it. So this is the scrap glaive of the cat. Uh, as it turns out, the, the V2 weapon kill, the special kill for Carbon Cat, is killing him as Iron Mouse. The Scrap Glaive of the Cat is one of the best hammers in the game. It it does a lot of damage, and it's got like a cool, like, if you have some energy, uh, the charged R2 will plant like an exploding detonating bomb, and uh, if I use it for a little while, we'll see that in action pretty soon. But uh, until then, well, at least it looks pretty cool. Very goopy, though. Oh ho! What have we here? One voicemail recovered from previous visit. Creo, keeping your memories close to heart. Look, Warren. I know I can't talk you out of this. I hope Creo works out for you. I really do. Remember that T-shirt you wanted when we were at the park, and I told you it was stupid. Iron Mouse. Well, I bought you one. It's not stupid. It's important to you. I get that. I want you to wear it when you go for your interview today. Okay? Good luck in there, sugar. Oh. <sighs> well, I guess we know where the Iron Mouse shirt came from. Poor Warren. He's been, uh... He's been leading a pretty sucky life as of late. Hopefully, once we get this mess solved and uh, file a letter of resignation for Creo, Warren can go back to his life as he knew it before he became a carnival circus lumberjack. I mean, I feel bad for the guy. I really do. I think this DLC does a pretty good job of adding just enough backstory to Warren where you, you know, you care a little bit more about the guy without going like super in depth to make up for lost time for the characterization they didn't do in the main game and all that stuff. And hey, look at that. The final exit leads us out right where the train is so we can just leave. But we're not gonna do that. I can't believe you beat that thing. Carbon Cat mascot was beyond out of control. I'm just glad you survived. But listen, I finally hacked the encrypted mission briefing the boardroom sent to my chief. It explains a lot. Well, let's head on back then to have one more conversation with Largo in an attempt to finally figure out what the hell is going on here and what caused all this mess. Because, I mean, even with Carbon Cat being covered in the Gribbly stuff, we still have no idea where the Gribbly stuff even came from. So who knows? Maybe we are about to find out. And I gotta say, in the end, Carbon Cat was right. This certainly was a day that I'm not gonna forget for a long time. My therapist will be able to attest to that. The search and rescue team is currently hiring. Apply now. Wow, you made it back. Are you alright? I think your team didn't make it. I'm afraid you might be right. I don't know what to say. I'm trying to save lives here, not lose them. I guess I'm the last one left in my squad. I'm not gonna rescue anyone, but... At least I can use my skills to find out why all this happened. What else do you know? It's like they knew something was gonna happen. They wanted my search and rescue squad on high alert patrolling Creo World for the past couple months. We've been watching for signs of failure in an electromagnetic containment field below the park. That's right. 
below the park. And what were they keeping down there? Huh. Would you be shocked to know it was that black nanite sludge? Turns out, Creo was working on creating some kind of self-replicating nanotechnology called Project Utopia. Were you able to uncover anything else about this Project Utopia? From what I've been able to hack, this Project Utopia may be at the root of everything that happened here. Apparently, the Resolve program has had serious problems for years. Project Utopia was some sort of plan B. So they started working on nanites. Looks like a single Utopia rocket could disperse them through damn near the whole atmosphere. It would achieve the same result as hundreds of Resolve rockets. Huh. So what's the downside, you ask? I think the nanites programming got fried, just like everything else. Now, they're replicating like crazy. Oh my. It seems we have a Grey Goose scenario on our hands. That's not good. This place isn't safe. We've done what we can. We should get you out of here. Actually, I've been thinking I should stay here for now. Official troops are going to arrive at some point. Someone will need to guide them. Run operations for them. But thank you. For everything. Without you, I'd never have known what had happened to my team. I would always have to wonder. You should go back to the factory. Try to find the boardroom. It's clear the board knows exactly what is happening. I'm sure you'll find the answers. Here's a map to the executive forum. Good luck, my friend. That's your choice to make, Largo. Thanks for the help, buddy. Hopefully I'll see you around. Good luck out there. And how about you? How are you getting along? Oh, hey. Whoa. I'm so happy to see you again. You saved my life, dude. No problem. Everything all right? As long as Iron Mouse is on my side, I shall have no fear. <laughs> all right, then. Live long and prosper out there, dude. Well, I'm sure Largo will keep you safe. I don't know if Largo is right about help eventually coming. I have a feeling that certain executives in charge might have uh, left Creo World in the dust, but who knows? Hopefully he's right. Hey mom, it's me, Largo. Listen, um, I can't make it home for Christmas, and I know that's gonna be a bummer for Grandpa, but I've got a really good work reason. It's not exactly a promotion. In fact, I, um, I quit. I'm not doing IT for CreoNet anymore. I know, I know, 10 years and could have been a senior technician, but so what, really? I joined the search and rescue team, Mom. I've wasted so much of my life in front of a screen. And finally, I'll be helping people. Well, I guess if Warren and Largo do have one thing in common after all, it's poor choices in workplace. So that ends A Walk in the Park. A really, really great DLC that I really, really enjoyed. It's back to R&D now so that we can resolve the lockdown and find out a little bit more about this mysterious Project Utopia. See you next time.